Hi, my name is John from Japanese Knife Imports, and today we're here to talk to you about some basic cutting techniques with Japanese knives. Because Japanese knives are so much thinner and harder than their Western counterparts, they're very susceptible to chipping due to lateral force exerted against the edge. And that can be from moving across your board from side to side, or twisting or rotating while cutting hard items. So one of the things that we need to do is when people start using Japanese knives, we need to help them adjust their technique so that they get used to using these kinds of knives in an appropriate and safe way. And one of the main things that we do with chef's knives and other things like that is we teach a thrust cutting technique as an alternative to the rocking motion, which when you do, keeps the tip of the knife in contact with the board as you're moving from side to side, exerting a lot of lateral force against the edge. The thrust cutting motion minimizes the amount of lateral force exerted against the edge and is much nicer for our knives. So I'm gonna show you how we do that a couple of different ways, and uh, hopefully this helps you out as you start to use Japanese knives. So the first thing that I want to do is position my body. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take one of my feet, my right foot, and move it back into the side a little bit, which is going to shift my body so that my arm will now have much better range of motion as I move. So now that I've positioned my body correctly, I'm going to consider where my work area is going to be. When I'm squared off with the board, my work area tends to be in the center of my board. But when I position my body to the side like this, it shifts my work area to the lower right hand corner of my board. This is really helpful for me for a number of reasons. First and foremost, it positions my knuckles so that they're over the floor instead of the cutting board, so I minimize knuckle clearance issues. Second, it positions me in such a way that it's much easier for me to look down at what I'm cutting and gauge cut thickness. And all that in conjunction with this better range of motion I have with my arms makes it a lot easier for me to cut appropriately. So the general motion that we're going to be doing for thrust cutting is going to look like this. And you can see that I'm pulling up towards myself and pushing down and pushing away from myself. And there's some slight up and down motion here to make sure that I'm not getting accordion cuts, that I'm cutting completely, since a lot of these blades do have curves to the profile a little bit. Japanese chefs tend to use more the tip of their knife, and so their motion will be more like this, whereas a lot of Western chefs tend to use the heel of their knife where you see much more of this kind of motion occurring. So when we want to do something like mincing herbs, for example, what we can do is we can shift an odd uh, in one direction and then rotate 90 degrees and shift an odd again to get nice and even and consistent cuts. We can use this for julienning, uh, but we can also use this for just general dicing and chopping. And you'll note that as I move across the board, because my knife is coming entirely off the board each time, I don't have the tip of my knife exerting lateral force scraping across my board like I would when I do a rocking motion. So again, this is the motion that we're looking for. Hopefully this helps you guys out and get started using gyutos and sujihikis and petties. Uh, but this motion is also applicable to usuba. Again, Japanese knives will tend to use the tip of their knife a little bit more than the heel of their knife, but it's still the kind of technique that we recommend when it comes to these kinds of knives. Thank you so much for watching. If you need to contact us with any questions, you can find us at JapaneseKnifeImports.com or shoot me an email at John, J-O-N, at JapaneseKnifeImports.com. Have a great day.